Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Henry. Um, today I was uh, going to film out in the garden and uh, do a segment out there, but the problem was is that my neighbor had his uh, had an arborist working in his yard the, the entire day, so the chainsaw and then the wood chipper was running the entire day, and then in the afternoon um, it was raining the whole time nonstop, and by the time the arborist stopped, it was dark outside, so I couldn't film outside. So decided to do something else. Um, it had been suggested several times by a few people that um, that I should go over the type of dive gear that I would use. So I thought this is a good opportunity. I'm, in, I'm inside my, my garage. This is my little dive bench here. Got my cave mask behind me. Um, <clears throat> so um, we'll, uh, I'll go over some of the gear that I use and maybe some of you guys are interested. So let's get started. So I guess the easiest way to, is to, to do this is to just start from the top and work my way down. Um, so the first thing, and I actually had a few questions about this, is my helmet, my dive helmet that I wear. Um, people have asked me, why do I wear a helmet uh, when I'm diving in a lake? Uh, so I wear it for a few reasons, actually. Um, so first of all, on the helmet, uh, the primary reason is probably because of the GoPro mount. So I can mount my GoPro and you get the, the point of view shot so you can see what I'm picking up. Uh, the second thing is, is that I actually have a couple of uh, lights on here. So I have my uh, backup light, which is physically attached to my head. Um, there we go. So at a quick turn, I can actually turn that on. And my primary light, which is always clipped off on my belt, the primary light, which is clipped right here on my shoulder or on my chest. Uh, and then um, I can actually, I can deploy the light, use it just in my hand, or if I needed to have my hands free, there is an, a mount on the side of my helmet, and all I do is I simply clip it on, and now I've got my primary light, and I can actually change the angle, so this is looking straight forward. I can turn it down a little bit, have it kind of more downward uh, where I'm working, if that's where I need it. And then pretty simple to take off. Uh, and then the, the, the last reason that I wear this is, and it might actually be the most important one, is safety. So when I am uh, diving in a lake and there is potential for overhead hazard, so whether I'm surfacing and I'm underneath a dock, um, or if I'm diving inside debris fields, so there's just logs everywhere. And the problem with that is, um, of course, uh, if, I, if I bump my head, uh, I could do some damage to myself, so I'd rather not do that. Um, and then the other one as well, too, is, is that sometimes there are um, uh, paddle crafts above me, so whether it's canoes or paddle boards or kayaks, and those are actually really, really quiet. They're much more dangerous than a motorboat because a motorboat, I can actually hear the engine coming quite far away, like the humming of the motor and the prop. Um, but a paddle board, a canoe, I actually can't hear them. So if I'm surfacing right underneath them and somebody comes along at a good clip, hit me in the head, I get knocked unconscious and I drown in the water. So uh, having a, a bit of head protection is always a good idea. So that's why I have a helmet on. Uh, so underneath the helmet, I have my hood. This is my uh, my cold water hood, and uh, I think it's like a four mil, five mil, something like that. I've had this probably for a thousand dives. It's kind of still still working all right. Um, I, I've heard of a, one of my dive partners, he forgot his hood one time and he tried to get into water with it and you think he lasted like five minutes underwater. He just had an ice cream headache, just completely frozen. He had to get out, couldn't do it. So in our cold water here, can't dive without a cold water hood. So, hood. So moving further down the list, this is my mask. This is a oceanic uh, shadow. It's a black skirted mask. A lot of the um, uh, technical divers and photographers prefer to use a black skirted mask just because there's less ambient light that will come down through a clear mask. And uh, I just happen to have a clear mask here. And you can see that um, uh, when I have my black mask on, it, everything's blacked out around me so I can't see any light. And then when I have a, a clear skirt on, there's actually a lot of glare 
that comes in from this side. So uh, if there's if there's light around me, that would be a distraction. So clear mask, black mask. I prefer a black mask. So moving further down, this is my regulator. It goes in my mouth. It's just what uh, the reason it's called regulator is because it regulates the pressure that comes out of the scuba tanks. Uh, I'll get to the scuba tanks in a second, but basically this is high pressure tanks and I, I can't have that high pressure going into my mouth because essentially, <laughs> which is overwhelm uh, the ability to breathe. So this brings it down to the pressure that I can actually handle. Um, there's a primary one and then a backup one. Let me get everything set up and I'll step into the rig and you can see how it works. I've got my um, buoyancy comp compensator or BCD hooked up to the um, to my dive tank, and then I've got my um, regulator hooked up. They're pressurized right now, so you can hear that. So this is the primary regulator. I have it on a long hose. This is a uh, seven foot hose, and the reason for this is because if I have to donate air, I can actually get this to uh, a partner who is uh, in a situation where they need air from my source versus their own source for a variety of different reasons. So I can give that to them. And then this one here, this is my backup regulator, uh, regulator and it's, uh, it's commonly referred to as my necklace. So I'll breathe from my necklace and I'll donate my primary. So there we go, that's how that works. When this has not been used, I've got chest e-ring, I can clip that off so everything is all secure. Uh, this is a more of a technical diving rig. A lot of the recreational guys will simply just have like a three foot hose and um, uh, they will donate their octopus or their, back, their backup regulator and keep their primary in their mouth. Different methods of diving. This is just one kind of training that, um, that I've taken up and uh, I've been using this for a very long time. So moving down our body, this is called the buoyancy compensator. The buoyancy compensator, um, it's kind of funny how this works. So when we're floating at the surface of the water, we're actually quite weighted. Uh, I have um, probably close to, I wanna say uh, 65 pounds of gear, not counting some of the other things I might carry. I think by the time I'm all said and done, I'm probably around 90 pounds of actual weight on me, ballpark. And um, so, so I'm very, very negative in the water, so I need something to actually keep me afloat. Um, it's kind of like a life vest in that sense. So this here, this bladder simply inflates. This particular bladder is a 45 pound lift. Uh, so it's capable of holding up 45 pounds in the water and then plus the dry suit that I wear, the combination of the two, I'm actually able to stay positively uh, buoyant in the water column. So uh, this particular uh, setup here, this is an OxyCheck, it's super, super old. You can see it's all sun faded. I have a stainless steel back plate on here with a channel weight on here. There's a big chunk of lead. This, is, this weighs about 10 pounds. The back plate weighs about six pounds. And then in the back here, in order to attach this bladder to the tank itself, I have a channel. It's a, and that has another six pounds of weight in it. So it's really, really heavy. Uh, so once we get uh, below the water surface, however, then this becomes um, much more neutral and I can actually let a lot of the air out. So this is how you dump air. And then also in my dry suit, I actually have dump valves that can let some of the air out as well too. So this is my scuba tank. It's um, it's commonly referred to as a steel stubby because of how short it is. It holds 80 cubic feet of air at 3,500 PSI, and um, uh, which is why we need, it to, we need the regulator to bring the pressure down to a manageable uh, pressure that I can actually breathe. The first stage regulator brings the pressure from 3,500 PSI down to about 172, 180, around there somewhere PSI and then uh, it steps down further into your second uh, secondary uh, or the second regulator. So this is the, there's different stages. So these tanks here uh, come in different sizes. Uh, this, 
the steel you can get them in uh, 80 cubic feet they go smaller as well too but this is the primarily uh, we're just talking about the stuff that's on our back so this is an 80 cubic feet you can get them in the hundreds 110 and 130 cubic feet uh, typically you wouldn't step into those sizes unless you're uh, in doing a technical dive where you need massive volumes of gas or if you simply just breathe a lot. Uh, I know a couple of guys that are really big guys over six feet and the huge lungs, every breath they take is massive. So therefore they have, they use much bigger, bigger tanks. For me, um, especially given the type of cleanup dives that I do now, uh, 80 cubic feet is plenty. A lot of my dives are actually very, very shallow, 20, 30 feet deep. That's about it really. Um, so very rarely do I have need to go f bigger than this and if I do need more gas for whatever reason so let's say I'm um, uh, I need to inflate a lift bag to get the garbage off the bottom and I needed more gas I would just bring additional tanks with me that are slung on the side of my body really little tanks oh and the reason that I use a steel tank versus aluminum tank which is incredibly common all over the world is that the steel tank is more negative in the water than the aluminum tank. Aluminum tank, by the time you breathe it down to say 300 PSI or 500 PSI, uh, the, um, the tank becomes very buoyant in the water and you have to compensate for that by wearing more weight, which is just more stuff to carry around on you as you walk into the water. It's very, it's very annoying. So I like to use a steel tank simply just because they're much more negative in the water and it means that I have to carry less weight overall. So moving down to uh, what I wear um, on my body. So um, I've got a couple of dry suits and underneath the dry suit is my dive underwear. Basically this is a onesie and uh, this is what I wear to as an insulating layer to keep me a little bit warmer. Um, this is a fleece, like a fleece material and it's pretty thin. You can get them much thicker but um, I don't really have a need for much thicker material. Uh, you can get them in loft material as well too. Uh, try to kind of like a giant sleeping bag. So I have two dry suits. This is my old Brooks dry suit. It's a neoprene material and um, it's completely waterproof. The boots are attached, a waterproof zipper, and then uh, I wear dry gloves, which I'll show you in a second. And then there's a dry neck seal. And I put it on like this. Stick my head through. The latex neck seal prevents water from getting in. And then the zipper is on the, on the back. So this is a back zip or a rear entry suit. So this is my other suit. This is a, what's called a shell suit or a trilaminate suit. Uh, I believe this is trilaminate or triple, lam triple lamination. So this one here is a front entry suit or self donning suit. And the reason for that is because I step into the suit from the front side and the zipper uh, actually goes over my shoulder across my chest and this is how I get into the suit. Same thing with the latex neck seal which uh, seals the, the water up and the difference is with this one here I can grab the zipper bring it over my chest shut her down and I am completely waterproof now. Let me show you the dry gloves. So underneath my gloves, I need a glove liner just to keep my hands a little bit warmer. It's a neoprene glove, so if I do get a little bit of leakage, my hand stays a lot warmer for longer. And once I have that on, my dry glove goes on. It has a um, an O-ring on it, so that is what makes it watertight and it fits into its mate. The dry glove ring that's on my dry suit and there we go so now my dry suit uh, or my hand itself is now watertight okay. and to get it off I simply turn the ring and close that off now um, on the dry suit on both dry suits there is a an air intake which is right here um, and I press on it and it allows air to enter into my suit. So as I descend down in the water column, what happens is the, the air molecule will condense and condense and condense and then the suit itself will squeeze. 
Um, and in order to compensate for that, I have to continuously add air into my dry suit. And the intake is here, and then this is the dump valve. So as I ascend the water column, they're inside my sewer wash, expand, and the air dump comes out here. All right, so there we go. Oh, to make my gloves equalize, because my dry suit, I can add and dump air from my dry gloves, which is sealed from the rest of the suit via this little latex seal here. What I do is I have these little straws. They're just little tubes. And I put them into my seal like that. So that way I can actually get air in and out of my gloves. So moving further down my body, we cover the dry suit and um, I don't actually wear a weight belt, which is the next thing on my body the, as I progress further down. Uh, I do own a weight belt when I dive in salt water because I need the extra five pounds of weight. Uh, in fresh water, there's less buoyancy, salt water being more buoyant. Um, so when I'm diving in lakes, I don't actually wear a weight belt. Uh, continuing moving down the body, the last thing is my boots and fins. Both of my dry suits are um, have boots attached, so I don't need to put on extra boots. And uh, these are the fins. These are Scuba Pro uh, jet fins. Um, my other set is Turtles. Um, they're the top two brands that technical divers and cavers prefer because the fins are super heavy and uh, very, very stiff. Um, usually when we have so much mass, propelling ourselves through the water with multiple bottles or whatever it is that we're doing. For us, it's the garbage that we're pushing through the water. Um, we can't have flimsy fins. So if they flap a lot, we get less propulsion. So if you kind of think of it as torque with these heavy fins that are very stiff, we can generate more torque. Good fins, I like them. So we're down to the peripherals that I would carry on my body. Um, probably the most important one is a dive computer. Uh, this particular one is a computer that I actually just got last year because my previous two computers, uh, they both crapped out. So this is a sheer water dive computer. Uh, I have it in, uh, have it on my wrist right here. Really, really bright, um, multicolored computer. This particular one is a Perdix and on it, it gives me my, uh, let's see here. It gives me my depth in the water. Uh, it's been 40 days since I've done my last dive. That's how long we've been out of the water. Really unfortunate. Uh, gives me my safety stop information, what kind of gas I'm breathing. Yeah, this is a good computer, I like it. On the computer itself, I have a line cutter. Uh, it is physically attached to the dive computer itself. And so that way it's always on my wrist. And I pull this out, there's a little line cutter. So if I have to cut fishing line, it's easily accessible. I prefer these line cutters or scissors than um, uh, dive knives. The reason being is because uh, the dive knife sheath are often against your body, say on your belt or something like that. And when we're in the water and it's really, really bulk, everything's bulky, like you don't have a lot of agility. So if I'm trying to put dive knife back inside the sheath, I'm more likely to stab myself than anything else. So I don't really like knives very much underwater. Uh, so I prefer line cutters and there's different ones. That particular one is just really small, really compact. It sits on my wrist like that. When I'm in the caves, that's the one that I prefer because you can imagine if I'm wedged into a tiny little hole and I got my arms ahead of me and I'm stuck and I have like a cave line or my own line wrapped around something and I need to cut it, I can't actually reach anything on my belt because I'm inside a little hole like this. So I can actually simply reach the line cutter that's on my hand right here and reach back and cut whatever I need to cut this way. Um, just a little something I picked up when I was in the caves. All right, so that pretty much covers all of the dive gear that I would normally go for a dive with. Uh, here are some of the equipment that I use for recovery. So these are just, um, you've seen this in a lot of my cleanup videos and all of my cleanup videos. These are just onion bags and um, I get them from the local grocery store. They keep them aside for me, uh, which is really nice because um, these are 
these are garbage to start with. They normally just slice these bags open and dump the onions into the display rack and throw these out. So I've asked them to keep them for me and, and also asked them to keep it intact. So what they do is they unstring the top here and then I have a great goodie bag that I can put beer cans and sunglasses into. And then afterwards, uh, as I lift it out of the water, the water just sips out of it. And uh, and when I'm done collecting garbage, this just ends, I just put everything back in the garbage or I put all the beer cans and, and golf balls or whatever into it and then toss it into the garbage. I don't keep these things because I don't need to. I get lots of them from the grocery store, which is really cool. The next thing um, is we attach, I carry a lot of these carabiners or um, I try to find them for cheap um, when somebody's getting rid of their old climbing gear. And these are good because we simply hook the onion bags with everything in it uh, to a lift bag and to multiples of them. And uh, we can lift this out of the water. And the lift bag, and the lift bag is this thing right here. This is actually clipped off to my uh, buoyancy compensator, my PCD. Uh, and then when I do need it, I simply underwater, I take the strap off and this whole thing gets opened up like that. So basically, it's a giant balloon underwater. So down at the very, very bottom is a strap and all of the, all of the onion bags simply get clipped in. And when I fill this sack with air, it'll lift everything out of the water. This particular one is a 125 pound lift. And, uh, but I have other ones uh, here that are much, much bigger. This one here, for example, is a 200 pound commercial lift bag. Open cell on the bottom here, same thing, got the straps down the bottom, so I can actually uh, hook up whatever I, we've actually lifted boats out of the water with this thing, um, or multiples of them, not just as one, but we sometimes we need it like 10 bags just to get something out of the water. And the very last piece of equipment that uh, I can show you is, uh, this is my underwater scooter. Uh, this particular one is a silent submerge uh, Viper with upgrade electronics and upgraded prop. Um, seen as a lot of you guys probably haven't seen an underwater scooter before. I thought I'd show that to you. So this is the, the outer, I guess, Delron housing is um, what this is. Uh, super, super strong able to hold back immense pressure. I think it's rated up to like either 500 feet or a thousand feet or something like that. Quite silly. This is the, um, the upgraded electronics and battery this is lithium ion and uh, runtime is I think around four or four and a half hours, maybe five hours. Um, it's been a long time since I um, needed it for any that any reason like that so really i use it for uh 30 minutes or an hour or something like that getting the garbage from point a to point b just because um, it's either way too much weight to push through the water um, or a very long distance so upgraded aluminum prop super super fast I've got three speeds on here uh, i think my top speed is a little over three knots or something like that much faster than i can swim and as well too is, is that if i'm hauling garbage it's like a giant sail behind me, so having this helps a lot. So there we go. That's your um, your five five cent tour of all my all my dive gear, and um, um, I didn't really sort of mention too many names on there, just because uh, everything that you saw. I Bought with my own money. None of it is actually sponsored or um, paid endorsement of any kind. Um, there's uh, lots of different ways that uh, you can configure your dive gear. I'm sure I'm going to get some comments below that said, "Oh, I would never dive it that way." Yeah, great, whatever. You know, you do you. So um, this uh, this is just how I. A lot of this old habits uh, picked up from. Uh, my caving days or my technical diving days um, and uh, they, they work well for me just what I know uh, any questions at all comment below but otherwise stay safe we'll see you guys in the next video